fantastic to be back on another lovely sunny day here in the UK for Kenji's Cocktail Kitchen. I'm Kenji, I'm a consultant in the global alcohol industry and I'm doing a series of videos and masterclasses to show you how to make great looking and great tasting cocktails at home. Uh, all brought to you by my great friends uh, at Monin. Now this week, I want to dive into punches. Now punches have got a great history, they've been around for hundreds of years and I think it's very relevant now as you can serve out uh, and pre-make the drinks uh, in advance, which is nice. So you can just have a single station uh, with your punch bowl ready and you can serve out and everyone can have a different glass uh, and then you can be uh, very responsible uh, out in your drinking, uh, in your garden like we have. So I've um, come up with three different uh, punches for you today and I've all based it around a very uh, historic recipe around punches. Uh, and it's a ditty and it's very easy to remember. So it's um, uh, one, when we're talking the numbers, we're talking parts. So one of sour. So whether that's lime or lemon or grapefruit or orange and two of sweet. So we need the, the sugar. So obviously the, the moan and syrups really come into play there. So one of sour, two of street, sweet, three of strong. So that's the alcohol. I'm doing a mix of different spirits, but I'm also using rosé and I'm using champagne. Uh, to really bring in different flavors and elongate the drink. So strong can be a number of different elements. And four of weak. So whether that's the ice that dilutes the drink or mixes or tonics or fruit juices. Um, so it's one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak. There's another part of the rhyme as well, which go a dash of bitters. So whether you've got Angostura or Fees, and I'm also using Regan's orange bitters and a sprinkle of spice. It's really to get a little bit of cinnamon or nutmeg or different spices to come into the drink as well to really give it a little punch to your punch and serve well chilled with plenty of ice. One of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak, a dash of bitters, a sprinkle of spice, serve well chilled with plenty of ice. So first of all the punch bowl, obviously a nice big vessel. I've got a load of these, I've done a number of events uh, with punches which is great for, for large numbers. Uh, so I've got this lovely punch bowl uh, and a ladle uh, to go with it. You can get nice glass punch bowls or get creative with the bowls that you have uh, around your house. So a good size, obviously depending on how many people that you're going to be serving for. Now very important uh, around punch is ice. Uh, ideally what you want is a central big block of ice. So you want the drink very cold and then you want to top up with a normal cubed ice which will actually be scooped up along uh, with the ingredients into the glass. So you don't need to ice each glass separately. So a big block of ice to keep the drink cold, slowly dilute it, and then lots of fresh ice to serve out into each of the drinks. Simple solution to make the big block ice is just use an ice cream tub. Or you have a, a lock and lock, a top and wear, uh, or do, never fill it right to the top because it will expand uh, with the ice. So you can see there, I've used this one. And the great thing about putting the lid on as well, you get the very clarity. So you get a big block of ice that's gonna take the center uh, part of the punch. I'm just gonna follow uh, the recipes, just pour everything in uh, to the punch itself. So let's get started with the summer punch. So as I'm thinking floral, garden, barbecue, picnic, uh, but let's follow the recipe. So one of sour, so I'm gonna use lime juice. I'm not gonna use a jigger, actually I'm not gonna use a shaker. I'm not gonna use very many uh, bar tools at all. I'm gonna use a lot of my kitchenware uh, today because um, even with the measures it's a hundred mil, lots of freshly squeezed lime uh, they squeezed earlier, pour everything over the ice, so hundred mil lime. So one of sour, two of sweet. Uh, so I'm going to use Monin's elderflower cordial. Now I love elderflower uh, as you can see. Mm, great balance of the sweetness but the floral elements uh, of the lovely elderflower come through. So I want 150 ml of that. Obviously the, um, the ditty, you need to flex around depending how sweet and sour you like things. I think some of the, the sweetness from some of the other ingredients which is why I've done 150 ml of the elderflower. So 100 lime, 150 elderflower. And then the strong. So I'm going to use a, a gin base. So it's basically going to be like a, a gin and tonic mixed with a rosé with some of the elderflower. So I'm, going to use, I'm using Tanqueray 10, 200 mils. If you wanted a, a lighter version of this drink, just so you can take out uh, the gin. So 200 mils, Tanqueray number 10. In there. 
And then a bottle of rosé. So I'm using the yellow tail rosé. Crisp and delicate, blossoming with juicy strawberries and cherry flavours. Tasty. Pour that in. So my one sour was lime, two sweet of the elderflower, three strong, gin, rosé, and then four weak. So I'm going to top up with some tonic, 600 mils tonic. So I'm going to pour a whole bottle of this in here. That's 500. Obviously the ice will dilute for extra parts of the week. Then a dash of bitters. So to complement the, the lovely summer flavours and the summer punch, I'm using peach bitters. Uh, so 10 ml of the peach bitters, so a, a teaspoon is 5 ml. Give you an idea. So two teaspoons worth of the peach bitters. And then, to prepare for my ice. I'm going to stir it up, move that big ice block inside. Now instead of spice here, I'm going to use a herb, I'm going to use mint leaves. I think with the summer elements, you can also get creative with other spices if you want. I'm going to use uh, mint leaves, switching the spice. Give me a smack to get um, lovely mint oils and the flavorings coming through. Very tasty, very light, very easy going, sweetness. Um, might just drink that in the garden afterwards. But let's now, so you can prepare this drink up to this point, about half an hour before your first guests arrive. You can let it sit there, the big ice block will dissolve, but quite slowly, it will last a number of hours. And just as people arrive and you're going to serve out the drinks, it's where you can get a, a bag of fresh ice in there. I'm going to mix that around. And then the garnish. The garnishing on a punch bowl, you want to make it as visible as possible. Um, so I like the berries in this version. So even my strawberries, I'm going to cut into long ways, like heart shapes. And then you can float these uh, lovely cut shapes onto the top. Be generous with the garnish. The great thing about the punch is, is the look of it. As people go in, you can see all the fresh fruits, smell the lovely aromas. I'm not sure about the angle of the camera, but you can see my lovely punch, my big ice uh, in here. Now I'm going to serve some out. Be a shame not to. Now, uh, with punch bowls, you can get matching punch glasses. But I think one of the great things about a punch at home uh, is to get creative uh, with the glassware that you have. Pull out the, the single glasses or the creative uh, little elements that you might have around uh, and try and suit them a uh, particular glass or a particular person. Like I'm a bit of a Star Wars geek, uh, so I'm going to use um, an inverted Stormtrooper uh, glass. Get some of the, the ice that you put in there. Pick up some of the, um, the garnishings. Let's move this out of the way and get these lined up. So I'm going to pour out three. So little Star Wars one. Or you might have a guest that you think will be more comfortable drinking from a martini glass. You can obviously serve this one straight up with or without the, uh, the ice. It's the same drink. The glassware makes a big difference. Talking about texture. Hmm. Oh, that's tasty. Um, and lastly, another option, you've got some jam jars lying around. If you're outside, um, you want to secure your drink. It's got a self-paced lid. You can see it's very easy for everyone to have their own glass. Cocktails. So there we have my first punch, ready to roll. Uh, it's a, a summer punch. Mm, thinking light, floral, sweet, uh, outside in the heat kind of flavors. I used fresh lime for my sour. I used elderflower, uh, Mona's elderflower cordial. Uh, I've used some uh, 200 ml gin, some, a bottle of rosé, some tonic, some peach bitters, some mint, uh, and some berries over lots of ice. 
for my very first summer punch of the season. Right, so there we have my three glasses of summer punch. And next up is gonna be my tropical fruit punch. So I'm gonna start off once again uh, with my sour. I'm gonna be using the lime, the freshly squeezed lime uh, that I've got. So 100 ml of fresh lime. And I'm gonna use uh, Monet's passion fruit puree. Uh, one of my favorite of the, the puree range is just the passion fruit. I love, mm, I love the smell of passion fruit. It's just, um, well, it's 50% of the, of the, of the puree is, is a fruit. We've got purple uh, passion fruits from Brazil. So I'm gonna use 150 ml of passion fruit. I'm gonna add some falernum. I love falernum. Uh, you get the tropical flavors, the ginger, the anise, uh, not the anise, the, um, uh, the clove and the, the vanilla. It's just 50 ml. Or if you like it a little bit sweeter, you can switch out uh, the falernum for Monin's uh, grenadine. Uh, so just 50 ml of falernum or grenadine to boost up the sweetness. And then with the strong in this version, I'm going to use spiced rum. You can use dark rum for darker flavors, um, but I'm going to use Captain Morgan Spice Gold, Morgan Spiced. I'm going to use uh, about 500 ml. Let's get the bigger measures in. So lime, passion fruit, falernum, spiced rum, and then pineapple juice and orange juice. I don't like to use just pineapple juice, it gets a, a little too heavy, so I like to mix it in. So I'm going to use 500 ml of great pineapple juice. I like to use juices with bits in, there's a lot more flavors to it. You can buy all of these ingredients in your, your weekly shop. Um, and I'm going to use uh, orange juice, 250 ml. You the fruity flavors, so I've got the spice rum, I've got the lime, passion fruit. And I want a bit of bubbles uh, in this drink, so I am going to top it up with uh, 400 ml of tonic. It lightens the flavor, has a little bit of buzz and fuzz, fizzle, should I say. Uh, to the punch. And then some Angostura tropical flavor is going to give it a big boost. I'm going to give a tablespoon, 15 ml. Yes. I love the smell of this already. Wow, that really does amazing color on the top. I wish you could see the details of this. Okay, I'm going to mix around. I'm gonna add some uh, cloves for my spice element. Remember the poem? Do you remember? One of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak. A dash of bitters, a sprinkle of spice. Serve well chilled with plenty of ice. Woo. It's definitely a punch. Same things applies. Remember when you're tasting your punch, you, you are going to have to allow for the dilution of the ice that will occur. It might taste too strong at the beginning, but that's all right. This ice will obviously dilute down to the right flavors. Remember that water is part of the ingredients uh, as the ice melts. It turns into part of the wheat. This game, we want a nice garnish on the top. I've got some fresh uh, passion fruit. These look great for some fresh colour into there. Float them on the top of the punch. Nice. Uh, and then some lime wheels. Rather than wedges, which I would normally do in an individual drink, lime wheels, a lot more visible on the top of your punch. Beautiful. Tropical heat. Right, so what are we going to serve this in? Well, I've got a number of glasses once again um, to serve out uh, my punches. Um, so we could have a sharing one for a couple. My 
pineapple. Lots of the ice in there as well, keep it cool. Always pop up the drink with more ice as we go. Gonna get a fresh passion fruit on the top of the drink. Yes. Uh, what else? Good serve the tropical punch in. Root around. If you've got a tiki mug, for some reason, it's an opportunity to use it. We get that line, line wheel Whip. on the top. Line that guy on here. And I got a dare the dead mug from Mexico. Uh, interesting for each of my guests a different mug or a different punch glass, as I say. On here. So that was punch number two. Still lasting. So that was the tropical fruit punch. Lime, Moaning's passion fruit puree, falernum syrup, spiced rum, pineapple juice, orange juice, tonic, Angostura bitters, the cloves, all mixed up, lots of ice, passion fruit, and lime. Ooh, so last punch of the day, the champagne birthday punch. So we're gonna we're gonna give it all for this one for that special birthday. So I'm gonna serve once again lime, but I'm gonna use 50 ml because this time instead of the extra lime, I'm gonna use Paragon's Rueberry. Paragon is a new uh, luxury cordial, so you got the sweet and the sour. Uh, the sweetness comes from the expertise of uh, Monin, but the sour is fantastically interesting. Mm, so unique. Uh, it's the gluconic acid um, that comes in there and the flavor of each of the Paragons is um, a singular uh, flavor, a single berry, um, a, a berry from a pepper. Uh, so this is a uh, berry uh, from an Ethiopian uh, pepper. So I'm gonna go 150 ml of the berry. Paragon's blueberry, yes, please. So, put that in there. It's got the sweet and the sour, the complexity. What more could you want? I'm gonna use 100 ml of vodka. I'm gonna use Smirnoff Panka. Now if it is your birthday, obviously pull out all the stops, use all your luxury stuff. Why not, treat yourself. So I am going to use a bottle of champagne, I've got some Tattinger uh, to pour in. Yeah, you could use Prosecco or Cava, um, but for your birthday, why not go a little bit special? I'm going to pour that into my lovely punch. Now I'm going to balance it out. So my sour was the lime, um, and partly from the Paragon. The sweetness was from the Paragon. Uh, and a dash of uh, vodka, a bottle of champagne, and then the, the weak. So I'm gonna use some cranberry juice, 400 ml. I like the dryness, this, this, the dry, sweet, sour element of cranberry. Lovely color as well. 400 of ginger ale. If you don't like ginger ale, you can switch it up. Lemonade or soda if you want it drier. I like the, the little ginger spice and the kick the ginger will do. Then I'm going to use a, a tablespoon of Regan's orange bitters. So the first uh, drink we use peach and we use Angostura. A tablespoon, 15 ml of Regan's bitters. Give that a little mix. I've got some cinnamon sticks here. That's my spice. Oh, yes. Champagne birthday punch for the win. That is tasty. I'm going to add a load of ice. Oh, this is that fizz. And then to garnish this, I'm going to use orange wheels. I need to get that lovely front facing fruit floating on the top of the drink. And then what you can do, if you get your, your mint sprigs, put it through your orange 
uh, that will make it stick up, but it's a lovely garnish for champagne birthday punch. So I use lime, Paragon's rhubarb, vodka, bottle of champagne, cranberry, ginger ale, some bitters, ice, lovely garnish. What are we going to serve this in? That is tasty. So once again, I've got a, a selection of different vessels that to use. Same drink, I'm going to serve in a really nice copper mug. Gives a lovely feel to it. it. Makes it nice and cold with the metal. And lastly, for the birthday boy or girl, man or woman, should I say? Really gone all out with this champagne birthday punch. We've got three punches, three of each. Makes my nine nine serves for today. <laughs> Obviously, normally for a group, I would do one punch. Tidy everything up. So that's been fantastic. We've had the, the summer punch, lime, elderflower, gin, rosé, peach, uh, uh, and tonic. We had the tropical fruit punch for the Monans, uh, passion fruit in the, the Falernum leading the way. Hmm. And if you've got someone special in your life that want to celebrate a birthday, you've got the champagne birthday punch, the Paragon's rhubarb. Champagne, cranberry, ginger, um, all lovely flavours. So, thank you very much for watching this episode of Kenji's Cocktail Kitchen. So stay well, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.